everyone welcome to Rasayan Academy guys so another video in the short trick series that is today we are going to understand the nomenclature of the compounds containing chiral planes so before this we have already uh, done a video on RS nomenclature second thing is RS nomenclature of the compounds having chiral axis and here we are doing the nomenclature of compound containing chiral planes right so let's talk about them so first of all guys uh, the chiral molecules are classified under three categories as you already know <clears throat> the first one is the uh, one having a tetrahedral carbon like a symmetric carbon the second one is having a chiral axis like the uh, allenes and spiro compounds the third one is having a chiral plane so for example the first one that we are going to talk about is the ansa compound now yes what is the ansa compound as you can see when your benzene is connected through a number of carbons right to a number through a number of methylene groups by two sides what happens is again due to restricted rotation it is going to be chiral okay so due to restricted rotation it is going to be chiral and what do I mean by that restricted rotation see if the n value that is the number of methylene groups if n is equal to 8 till then the chain is only large enough the chain is only large enough to keep the benzene planar but if the chain size increases then the benzene is easily able to rotate if the benzene rotates then what will happen both of these x and the coh can interchange their position and it is no more going to be chiral right so it is just like your biphenyl system uh, not exactly the same but yes the idea is the same that due to restricted rotation you are going to have the chirality so the n value is going to be 8 if the n value exceeds 8 for example if it is 10 it will become non-resolvable why will it be non-resolvable because now the chain is going to be big enough it has enough space to move around to rotate the benzene will rotate right so that is why the molecule will be achiral so okay so for the answer compounds which show chirality and chiral uh, chirality due to the chiral plane the plane which is containing all of these atoms is considered as the chiral plane how are we going to do the nomenclature in this system so very simple first of all the atoms which are connected to the benzene ring those we are going to skip and we have to select a pilot atom so who is the pilot atom not the atoms who are directly connected to benzene the atoms afterwards so let's say this and this you know, they could be the pilot atoms or kiss side pe karte hum look, uh, you know which side are we uh, finding out the pilot atom on the side that you see that there is an x over here okay yes so all right so this molecule is chiral for example and usually usually the nomenclature is asked for this kind of a molecule because here the x could be bromine here the x could be anything else so let's say we only have a bromine over here this will be easy to start with so we start with this molecule right so yes the first thing now your atom your substituent is on the right hand side of the benzene ring so this is what you are going to take as the pilot atom why because your bromine is on the right hand side so you take the right hand side ch2 methylene as the pilot atom then you start the numbering from the following atom that is going to be one oxygen ke liye one two for this carbon and three for this carbon right and then you see the rotation if it is clockwise it is r if it is anti-clockwise for example here it is anti-clockwise it will be s okay so absolutely very very easy that is you have to select the pilot atom which side on the side where there is substitution okay so on this side because on the right hand side because there is substitution on the right hand side of the benzene right so this is how you name it now we go uh, we go back to this example over here you might be confused that there is a COOH group as well in the molecule in the benzene ring is it uh, also going to be considered for nomenclature no the one which is outside which is shown to be uh, you know pointing outwards that is what we'll consider 
So once again the pilot atom. <coughs> once again the pilot atom one, two, and three. It is going to be anticlockwise. Once again it is S. Okay. So these are not, uh, resolvable and chiral ANSA compounds. Okay. All right. Moving on to one more example of the ANSA compound. So when you have a linear chain, okay, connecting two ends of the benzene substituted benzene ring, that is an ANSA compound. So the N value less than 8 is absolutely chiral because N value greater than 8 will become non-resolvable. So this is absolutely uh, resolvable when it is 5. So you take on the left hand side, you see now there is a pilot atom over here. Why are we not taking the pilot atom on the right? Because the substituent is on the left. So, this is your pilot atom. Start the numbering from the next carbon or the atom, oxygen. So, 1, 2 and 3. This time, you get the clockwise rotation. and That is why your molecule is supposed to be R. Okay, so I just hope that you have understood these things. First thing, you have to find out the pilot atom. Second thing, you have to start the numbering just next to the pilot atom if it gives you a clockwise rotation it will be r if it gives you a anti-clockwise rotation it will be s just that very simple so now uh, there is another type of molecule which we also call as paracyclophanes now these paracyclophanes are very similar to the ansa compound just that here you will have a very small system this is a very small and uh, restricted system why? Yeah, why is that so? Because you are having two benzene rings over here. So when there is when there are two benzene rings, these two cannot rotate very easily. So if they are not able to rotate, they are going to be fixed, and fixed is going to give you a chiral molecule, right? That is why we want that is how we get a chiral molecule, right? In this way. So this is chiral due to the chiral plane once again. A plane which is containing all the number of carbons that you can see over here. Yes. So how do you do the nomenclature? Once again, you have to find the pilot atom. How do you find the pilot atom over here? This is your pilot atom because, see, this is also a benzene. This is also a benzene. But... The one which is having the substituent, it should not be connected directly to that ring. So, Isilie, this is your pilot atom. You start the numbering from here. 1, 2 and 3. It, go, it goes anti-clockwise. So, it is going to be S. Isn't it? Very simple. If it is going anti-clockwise, it is going to be S. So, similarly, the third type of molecule is chiral due to steric overcrowding so once again most often you call it that uh, helical compounds are also showing chirality due to chiral plane but it is chiral due to steric overcrowding what is that what is steric overcrowding overcrowding means see if you had a normal benzene if you had let's say a normal chain of benzene rings like this and if it only ended up over here if it is not moving onwards, if it only ended up over here, then also it would be a planar molecule. This is planar. If you move onwards and if you still want to make a molecule and if you fuse these two carbons, if you have somehow fused these two carbon, this is still planar. Okay, but what happens to the molecule where these two carbons are different, they are not fused together, they are absolutely going to show steric hindrance and because of the steric hindrance one plane is going to be above the other one is going to be below that is what it results into so steric overcrowding results in the ring or some other substituent ring or substituent going out of the plane Okay, going out of the plane of the main helix. Ya fir main ring system. Okay. 
ring or substituent going out of the plane of the main ring or substitute uh, or the ring system so as you can see in this molecule so guys how do we do the nomenclature of this kind of molecule having chirality due to steric overcrowding do we name them in the same pattern as the rns no thoda sa different hai we name them as p and m descriptors what is p p is just like r p is clockwise rotation m is anti clockwise rotation okay just that you don't have any priority to give over here that's why we are not taking the rs r and s configuration right because in the r and s you have some priority to give here there is no priority what you are going to do is just start from the uh, broad ya fir bold line okay start from the bold line and reach to the dash line through the molecule okay so through the molecule you have to do this let's say this is what you have now you started from the bold line and then through the molecule you ended up over here what is this kind of a rotation this is clockwise or anti clockwise it is anti clockwise that's why it is known as minus theek hai it is having a minus configuration all right that's not uh, you know that's a very simple method and just to start from the bold line to the dash line through the molecule this is your nomenclature method p is for plus m is for minus now similarly what you have is you have another molecule okay here we are you have another molecule which is once again going to have both of these methyls out of plane because of overcrowding ya steric hindrance the methyls are going to turn away from each other they are no more planar so if they are no more planar let's say let's say the molecule is like this okay because one way all right because you have to draw the molecule in this way that is ch3 ch2 cooh all right this way so guys what happens is because of this steric crowd crowding the molecule goes out of the plane and that is why the methyls are above and below so you can do the same thing with this methyl being above and this carbon being below yes or no you can do that so basically both of these are the possibility so when it is not mentioned you will write both the possibility now go from the bold line to the wedge line this is clockwise so this is going to be plus and this is from bold line to the wedge line this is anti clockwise so this is going to be uh, sorry not s this is going to be m all right m is minus and uh, p is plus so plus ke liye you are having uh, clockwise okay just a second methyl is above right no no this is yeah this is clockwise okay and this is anti clockwise yes p and m you have both of these right so similarly if you are getting a hexa helicene which is uh, looking like this okay so which is looking like this that this bond is going to be below and this bond is above now you move your bonds how is it going to be this is clockwise so this is going to be plus this one we have named as minus this one is plus now let's do the example for it so there was a question in the csi net exam the correct absolute configuration of the following compounds is start with the ansa compound so this is your ansa compound it is not a paracyclophane it is a ansa compound right now this is your oxygen directly attached to the carbonyl group so this is your pilot atom okay yes so pilot atom kya karega after the pilot atom you have to do the numbering so 1 2 3 it is a clockwise rotation so it is going to be r 
so the pn m descriptor is only used for the uh, steric overcrowded molecules right and what about the first one see from bold from bold to dashed here it is going to be a anti clockwise it is going to be a anti clockwise and the answer is first is m second is r okay so this is your answer to the question which is like a very simple question okay so yes guys more such videos are going to come up jiske andar hum aur bhi zyada discussion karenge today we had talked about the nomenclature of the ansa compounds and uh, paracyclophanes and hexahelicine and some other steric sterically overcrowded molecules yes so i will see you all in the next video on the same series of short tricks till then what you have to do you know like share and subscribe and yeah watch all the videos chalo bye i'll see you soon guys